Hello everyone, my name is Igede Bagus Garita Mesa Putra. I'm from Faculty Medicine of Yudhana University, Bali. Uh, today I will present my case report about pregnancy with von Wilbrandt's disease. So let me begin from the abstract first, from the background. Menstruation, pregnancy, and childbirth may put women with coagulant disorder at risk of excessive bleeding. In this case report, we have a 25 years old pregnant woman with history of von Wilbrandt's disease since she was 17 years old. And on laboratory examination, there were a mild hemochromatic hypochromic anemia, increases activity APDT, and low von Wilbrandt factor. And the patient was terminated at gestational age of 39 weeks. Okay. The pregnancy was termination by, uh, planned by in, induction of 25 microgram misoprostol every six hours followed by intravenous desmopressin therapy. However, in the in the end of the pregnancy was terminated by cesarean section. The cryoprecipitate transfusion was prepared in case of excessive bleeding, and uh, in the in the result, the healthy baby was born, girl with no congenital abnormalities. From conclusion, uh, there were no complications nor excessive bleeding in pregnancy with von Wilbrandt's disease. Introduction. Uh, the von Wilbrandt disease is one of the most common congenital coagulation disorder that is inherited autosomally, caused by a von Wilbrandt factor defect both quantitatif quantitatively and quali qualitatively. Uh, pregnancy is considered by a, a, a hypercoagulable condition due to increased several hemostatic factor. This is an adaptive change that prepares the body for hemostatic challenges at the time of delivery and Pregnancy with formal disease uh, is also made at risk of bleeding. Uh, it needs to be thoroughly evaluated in order to determine the appropriate hematological and obstetric intervention for their condition. And the aims are to review a case of pregnancy in the third trimester with a history of von Wilbrandt's disease. And the second one is to know the latest theoretical studies related to pregnancy with formal disease in order to provide benefits in clinical practice in the future. So we move to case report. From the characteristics, we have a 25 years old pregnant woman who is referred from Arisanti Gyanyar Hospital with 29 weeks uh, gestational aid with suspected von Wilbrandt's disease. From the history, uh, the patient has only gum bleeding, uh, but no nose bleed or bruising, no abdominal pain, and no vaginal discharge. And the patient had a history of von Wilbrandt disease since the age of 17 years old. From menstrual history, the patient has a regular menstrual history, and uh, the volume was normal and no pain, no significant pain during menstruation. From a certain history, this is the first pregnancy with due date was July 15, 2020, and uh, from the history of antenatal care uh, is more than three times in midwives and obstetrician. From other previous history, the patient has no specific med medication history and no history of surgery, allergy, and blood transfusion. Uh, this is the timeline of uh, this case report. From Arisanti Hospital Gyanyar at 29 weeks gestational age, uh, the first pregnancy with gestational age of 29 weeks suspected for migraine disease. And then the patient was referred to Sangla Hospital uh, at 29 weeks gestational age also for further management. Uh, from vital sign and physical examination were within the normal limit. Uh, the patient has only gum bleeding, which is, uh, which is stopped simultaneously, and we found the funnel head was 26 centimeters, no uterine contraction, and good fetal heart rate. From laboratory examination at 34 weeks gestational age, we found that the patient has a mild microcytic hypochromic anemia with slightly increased APTT, and von Willen factor was less than 2%. At 39 weeks gestational age, uh, the estimated fetal weight is, was 3,550 grams based on ultrasound result, and the pregnancy terminated planet using induction with misoprostol every 6 hours. Uh, and from the labor preparation at 39 weeks gestational age, the patient uh, was given intravenous desmopressin, cryoprecipitate transfusion if bleeding occurs, oral virus sulfate and vitamin C, and uh, octanate before labor. Uh, and subsequently, the labor was performed using cesarean section, and the, from and the natal, neonatal outcome, the baby girl was born with good abdominal score, uh, and no congenital anomaly and vital sign within normal limit with birth weight 3,550 grams. And from the postpartum history, the patient had only only had epistaxis on second day after cesarean section and discharged from the hospital at the seventh day after cesarean section with normal postpartum leukemia. This is uh, the pictures of the baby, the healthy baby girl was born. 
and uh, we move to the discussion from von Willebrand disease is the most common hereditary bleeding disorder in women with a prevalence of 0 0.6 uh, to 1.3 percent even though the platelets are present in normal numbers they cannot function properly due to absence of the von Willebrand factor von Willebrand factor is responsible for linking collagen to glycoprotein 1b and glycoprotein 3a and accompanied by decrease uh, decreased levels of factor 8c and uh, and how we diagnose the patient is from the clinic, clinical manifestation, which is uh, mucocutaneous and soft tissue bleeding, such as uh, excessive menstrual, menstrual bleeding in women, epistaxis, and the others, uh, spontane bleeding. And the familial history of von Willebrand's disease, uh, it, uh, and low factor, lab, uh, factor 8, and normal ristocetin and rheology ristocetin. Uh, so we assess this patient with von Willebrand, factor, uh, von Willebrand disease type 1. Uh, pregnancy hypercoagulable state uh, physiologically during pregnancy some hemostatic increase this creating a hypercoagulable state and these changes are adaptive to prepare for labor and uh, form will factor and factor 8 also increase signific significantly during pregnancy and postpartum hemorrhage uh, is, is defined as blood loss more than 500 milliliter or blood loss more than 1000 milliliter in seasonal section and we, we also have to use the uterotonics immediately after delivery to reduce the risk of bleeding. And if in this patient, the patient only has a spontaneous gum bleeding was found during pregnancy. And this complaint only occurs a few times and always stops on its own without requiring medical treatment. And this patient experienced epistaxis and immediately stopped after receiving a tampon and no postpartum hemorrhage after cesarean section. The majority of women with von Willebrand disease do not experience problems during their pregnancy, but still at risk as uh, for postpartum hemorrhage. Uh, they need special consideration for determining the mode of delivery, for epidural management, and operative delivery techniques, uh, and must be managed by a multidisciplinary team. Von Willebrand factor, uh, von Willebrand factor replacement, optimization of hematological parameters for epidural epinesthesia, and the use of Form factor or factor 8 when needed to prevent excessive bleeding. The form factor and factor 8 level must be measured at 35, 34 weeks gestational age. And if less, the level was less than 50 international unit is found at 34 weeks, uh, we should have correct the therapy for form factor and factor 8. And in this patient, the form factor at level at 34 weeks gestational age was 1% with normal ristocetin and rheology test. Uh, our patient was already managed by a multidisciplinary team and already had received desmopressin for three days, cryoprecipitate and octanet for optimal hemostasis before labor. Uh, there was no significant bleeding after labor, no postpartum hemorrhage, only epistaxis on second day after cesarean section and normal postpartum nokia. So, uh, so we still uh, assess this patient with von Willebrand's disease type 1. And finally, the conclusion uh, from the case summary, we have a 25 years old woman with a third trimester of pregnancy who was accompanied by a complaint of spontaneous gum bleeding. The patient had history of von Willebrand disease since the age of 17 years old, and we, we had a prolonged, slightly prolonged appetite, normal platelet, and ristocetin aggregation was found during screening. The team collaboration was carried out the, the, to determine the management of therapy and termination in this patient. During hospitalization, patients received desmopressin, octanoic, and tranexamic acid therapy. The patient underwent a cesarean section at gestational age 39 weeks, and there is no significant bleeding nor advanced outcomes in this pregnancy.